Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the seventh lecture on the topic impact of jet on curved veins. In the previous lecture, we have discussed what happens if a jet enters a vein tangentially. This topic is continued in this lecture and at the end of this lecture, you will be able to apply impulse momentum principle and the concept of velocity triangle to analyze the impact of a jet and the corresponding work done by the jet on a moving curved vein as the jet enters the vein tangentially. Hence, today I will be talking about a jet entering a curved vein tangentially and the vein is moving with a velocity u and how do we apply the impulse momentum principle to calculate the impact of the jet on this moving curved vein and how do we calculate the work done and efficiency of the jet. Let us quickly glance through what we have discussed in the previous lectures. When this tangential jet enters a vein, this velocity at the inlet and the velocity at the outlet can be resolved into components along the x and y directions and the force or the impact of the jet on the vein along the x and y directions can be written in terms of the component velocities and accordingly it is given as fx is equal to rho a b square into cos theta plus cos phi and fy is equal to rho a b square into sin theta minus sin phi. In this case theta is the vein angle at the inlet, phi is the vein angle at the outlet. If theta and phi are not same, it is an unsymmetrical vein, when theta and phi are the same, it is a symmetrical vein. In this case, since the vein being stationary, work done is equal to 0. But if this vein is moving with a velocity u in the horizontal direction or along the positive x direction, that is when the velocity of the jet and velocity of the vein are not in the same direction, we need to express the impact of jet in terms of the relative velocity and in that case, the relative velocity of the jet can be determined by drawing the velocity triangle. And we have discussed the velocity triangles in detail. That is, it is a triangle drawn at the inlet or outlet of the jet, outlet of the vein in such a way that the absolute velocity of the jet is the resultant of the velocity of the vein and the relative velocity whether it is at inlet or at the outlet. Coming to the velocity triangle, at the inlet it is a triangle formed by the absolute velocity of the jet V and the velocity of the vein u in such, such a way that the third side or the closing side of the triangle gives you the relative velocity of the inlet that is Vr. In this case, the absolute velocity of the jet V makes an angle alpha with the direction of motion of the vein at the inlet and alpha is known as the jet angle at the inlet. If the jet enters the vein tangentially without any shower at the inlet, it means that the jet is tangential to the vein at the inlet or the relative velocity is tangential to the vein at the inlet or relative velocity makes an angle theta at the inlet. So, theta is the vein angle at the inlet. Absolute velocity of the jet V can be resolved into components along the direction of motion of the vein and in the perpendicular direction. These components are known as velocity of the vein and the velocity of the flow respectively. That is the inlet velocity triangle. Now, if the vein is smooth and frictionless, we can assume that this relative velocity at the inlet remains unchanged as the water flows through the vein and therefore Vr is equal to Vr1 if the vein is smooth and frictionless. And at the outlet, the velocity triangle can be drawn by considering the relative velocity and the absolute velocity of the vein. So, if you draw the relative velocity of the outlet and the absolute velocity of the vein, the closing side of the triangle gives you the absolute velocity of the jet V1 at the outlet. In this case, or if the jet is tangential to the vein at, at the outlet, Vr1 is tangential to the vein and therefore, Vr1 makes an angle phi with the direction of motion of the vein at the outlet where phi is the vein angle at the outlet. The angle that the absolute velocity makes with the direction of motion of the vein at the outlet is known as jet angle at the outlet and in this case beta is the jet angle at the outlet. As in the case of inlet, 
this absolute velocity of the jet can be resolved into components along the direction of motion of the vane and perpendicular to that at the outlet. These components are known as velocity of whirl at the outlet and the velocity of flow at the outlet respectively. Now for this case of a curved vane when the jet enters the vane tangentially and if the vane is moving with a velocity along the x direction so this is the positive x direction which is always taken as the direction of movement of the vane and perpendicular to that is the y direction. So if the vane is moving with a velocity u along the x direction the impact of the jet on this vane can be calculated by applying the impulse momentum principle. According to that the impulsive force is given by the mass flow rate into the change in velocity. So if you are talking about the force along the x direction mass flow rate multiplied by the change in velocity along the x direction or in the y direction it is mass flow rate multiplied by change in velocity along the y direction. Now in this case we know that when the jet is impinging the vein at this point this vein is moving to its new position at the rate u meters per second. So now this is the new position of the vein. So this jet has to travel an additional distance to meet the vein at this point. So whatever mass of the jet which can travel this additional distance can only meet the vein at this point. Therefore the mass striking the vein at this point is not equal to the mass which is coming out from the nozzle. Some amount is lost during this additional travel. Therefore, the mass flow rate in this case is given by rho a into the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane. This is the same case what we have seen in the earlier conditions. So, rho a into the relative velocity is the mass flow rate and the for the change in velocity we need to consider the velocity with which the jet is striking the vane at this inlet and the velocity with which the jet is leaving the vane at the outlet. In both these cases since the jet is moving with the velocity v and the vane is moving with the velocity u we need to consider the relative velocities of the jet. So what is the relative velocity of the jet at the inlet? What is the relative velocity of the jet at the outlet? Thus for Calculating the change in velocity, we need to calculate the change in relative velocities. So, impulse momentum principle states that impact of jet is equal to mass flow rate into change in velocity. To calculate the mass flow rate, we consider the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane, and to find the change in velocity, we again calculate the change in the relative velocities. Now, to find the impact of jet along the x direction, we need to find the change in relative velocity along the x direction. So if you see this diagram the relative velocity at the inlet is inclined at an angle theta to the x direction whereas the relative velocity at the outlet is inclined at an angle phi to the x direction. So if you have to find the force along the x direction we need to find the change in relative velocity along the x direction which means the difference in the components of the relative velocities along the x direction. So let us see what is the component of relative velocity vr along the x direction at the inlet. So this is vr which is inclined at an angle theta uh, to the x direction. So component of vr along the x direction is this much. This is the component of vr along the x direction at the inlet. This full side is vw that is velocity of the whirl at the inlet which is component of the absolute velocity along the x direction or v cos alpha and this part is the absolute velocity of the vane at the inlet that is u. Therefore component of vr along the x direction is given by the total vw minus u. vw minus u is the component of vr along the x direction. Coming to the outlet this is the vr1 which is inclined at an angle phi to the x direction and component of vr1 along the x direction is this one this full length which is vw1 plus u1. So this is vw1 vw1 plus u1 
and it is in the negative direction so we have to put the sign minus of vw1 plus u1 and this is vw minus u. So these two are the components of the relative velocity along the x direction at the inlet this is the inlet velocity triangle and this is the outlet velocity triangle. So at the inlet it is vw minus u at the outlet it is minus of vw1 plus u1. Accordingly you can see here that the change in relative velocity along the x direction is given by component of vr along the x direction at inlet minus component of vr1 along the x direction at the outlet which is vw minus u minus minus of vw1 plus u1 that can be rewritten as vw minus u plus vw1 plus u1. Now let us consider what is the impact of the jet along the x direction that is fx equal to mass flow rate into change in relative velocity along the x direction and we have seen that mass flow rate is rho a into vr and change in relative velocity at the x direction we have taken here that is vw minus u plus vw1 plus u1. Now let us see this expression in more detail. In case of a single curved wave which is moving in the horizontal x direction with a velocity u, it is reasonably good to assume that the inlet end and the outlet end of the vane are moving with the same velocity that is it is reasonable to assume that u is equal to u1. In this expression when the absolute velocity of the vane at the inlet u is equal to u1 this equation takes the form fx equal to these two will get cancelled so rho a vr into vw plus vw1. This is the case of a single curved vane moving it is reasonably good to assume that the vane velocities at the inlet and the outlet end are same. So fx is rho a vr into vw plus vw1 you consider this velocity triangle at the outlet. So let me again write it here this is the outlet and this is the inlet. At the outlet you consider this absolute velocity of the jet v1 and it is inclined at an angle beta to the direction of motion of the vane at the outlet and in this case beta is less than 90 degrees and this angle can change. So let us see what are the various uh, angles possible and how this equation is likely to change for different values of beta. So this is the case when beta is less than 90 degree and in this case you can see the component of v1 along the x direction that is vw1 is in the negative x direction vw1 is in the negative x direction. Next case what we are going to discuss is when beta is equal to 90 degree. So you can see here this vane ang jet angle at the outlet beta is equal to 90 degree that means v1 is in the v1 is perpendicular to u1 and in that case you know that what, what are v velocity of flow and velocity of whirl at the outlet. Velocity of whirl at the outlet is component of v1 along the direction of u1 and vf1 is component of v1 perpendicular to that. So in this case since v1 is in the perpendicular direction we can say that vf1 is equal to v1 itself and the tangential component is reduced to 0 or vw1 is 0 in this case that is when beta equal to 90 degree vf1 is equal to v1 itself and vw1 is 0 tangential component is 0 whereas the perpendicular component is equal to the absolute velocity of the jet itself. So when vw1 is reduced to 0 the equation takes the form fx is equal to rho a vr into vw that is velocity of word at the inlet only. The next case we can see if beta is greater than 90 degree the diagram takes this form you have to draw vr1 first then draw u1 and the closing side is v1 and v1 makes an angle beta with the u1 and in this case beta is greater than 90. And again you have to see what are the components of v1 along the direction of u1 and perpendicular to that. If you take that components 
In this case, since V1 is towards the right, the component of V1 along the direction of motion of the vane, it is Bw1 is also in the positive x direction and the component perpendicular to that is Vf1. So, here Vw1 was in the negative x direction when beta was less than 90 degree and when beta is greater than 90 degree, Vw1 has changed its direction. Therefore, in this equation, we have to change the direction of Vw1 or we have to change the sign of Vw1 and if we change the sign of Vw1, the equation takes the form fx equal to rho avr into Vw minus Vw1. So, these are the various cases. Therefore, in general you can write if u equal to u1, the impact of the jet along the x direction is given by rho avr into Vw plus or minus Vw1, where rho is the mass density of the fluid, A is the cross sectional area of the jet, Vr is the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane, Vw is the velocity of whirl at the inlet and Vw1 is the velocity of whirl at the outlet. Thus, in case of a tangential jet entering a curved vane and if the vane is moving with a velocity u along the positive x direction, the impact of jet along the x direction is given by fx equal to rho abr into vw plus or minus vw1. We use positive sign if beta that is jet angle at the outlet is less than 90 degree and we use negative sign if beta is greater than 90 degrees and if beta is equal to 0, vw1 is reduced to 0. Now that we have seen the expression for the impact of the jet or the force exerted by the jet on the vane along the extraction, let us see what is the work done by the jet on the vane. In this case, since the vane is moving at the rate u meters per second, when the jet pinches the vane, certain amount of work is done. So, work done by the jet on the vane along the x direction per unit time or the power developed by the jet along the x direction is given by, uh, it is represented as Wx because we are talking about the work done per unit time along the x direction, x stands for x direction. So, Wx is equal to force along the x direction multiplied by the velocity of the vane along the x direction. So, force along the x direction is rho avr into vw plus or minus vw1, velocity of the vane along the x direction is u. So, rho avr into vw plus or minus vw1 into u gives you the work done by the jet on the vane along the x direction per unit time. When this is the expression for work done per unit time, in this expression you can see this term rho a into vr. Rho is the mass density of the liquid, A is the cross sectional area and Vr is the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane. So, area into velocity gives you the discharge uh, that is volume flow rate per unit time. Rho into area into velocity, we have already seen that this gives you the mass flow rate. So, we, uh, this is the mass that is striking the vane per unit time and therefore, we can calculate this work done per unit weight of water striking the vane, work done per second per unit weight of water striking the vane. For every unit weight of water, what is the work done? That can be obtained if you divide the, this work done by the weight of the water that is striking the vane per second. This is the mass flow rate or mass striking per unit time. Therefore, weight of water that is striking per unit time is given by mass striking per unit time into acceleration due to gravity because you know that weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. Therefore, weight of the water striking the vane per unit time is mass flow rate multiplied by acceleration due to gravity. Mass flow rate we have already determined here as rho a v r. So, rho a v r into acceleration due to gravity. In this you can cancel the common terms rho a v r and rho a v r which reduce the equation to the form. Work done per unit weight of water striking the vane is equal to 1 by g into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u. The work done by the jet per unit time along the x direction 
or the output power developed in this case is given by rho a v r into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u and you know that in this case we are talking about a jet uh, which is coming out from a nozzle with a velocity v. So, the input energy that is supplied to the system was the kinetic energy of the incoming jet which is half rho a v cube. Therefore, we can find the efficiency of the jet in this case which is equal to the output power divided by input kinetic energy or work done per unit time divided by input kinetic energy per unit time that is rho a v r into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u divided by half rho a v cube and by cancelling the common terms this can be simplified into 2 times v r into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u divided by v cube where v r is the relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane, u is the absolute velocity of the vane, v is the absolute velocity of the jet, v w and v w 1 are the velocity of whirl at the inlet and the outlet respectively. Now, let us slightly deviate from our main course of discussion. Uh, let us see this work energy principle uh, which is applied to this case we can see that a jet is coming and impinging on a vane and the vane is moving with the velocity as a consequence the jet is uh, doing certain work on the vane or certain power is imparted to the vane. And during this process the energy available to the jet is changing. We have seen earlier that the jet is coming with a velocity and it has certain kinetic energy. It is entering the vane with a velocity v and it is leaving with a velocity v1 which means that the kinetic energy of the jet has changed. So, the work energy principle states that work done by the jet on the vane is equal to the change in kinetic energy of the jet. Therefore, let us see what is the work done by the jet and what is the change in kinetic energy that has taken place for the jet. Work done per second by the jet on the vane is given by rho a v r into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u. We have seen this earlier. Change in kinetic energy of the jet is given by kinetic energy is expressed as half m v square. Therefore, Change in kinetic energy of the jet per second is kinetic energy per second at the inlet minus kinetic energy per second at the outlet or half into mass flow rate into square of the velocity at the inlet minus square of the velocity at the outlet because we assume that mass flow rate does not change it remains constant. And this mass flow rate is given by rho a into v r as we have seen in the previous cases. Uh, therefore, half into rho a v r into difference between the squares of the absolute velocity that is v square minus v 1 square gives you change in kinetic energy that is work done by the jet is given by rho a v r into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u change in kinetic energy of the jet is given by half rho a v r into v square minus v 1 square and if we equate these two and if we simplify this expression further by cancelling the common terms, we will get the expression that 2 times v w plus or minus v w 1 into u is equal to v square minus v 1 square. We know the expression for efficiency and from work energy principle we have seen that this 2 into v w plus or minus v w 1 into u in the efficiency expression can be equated to v square minus v 1 square. So, doing that substitution in the efficiency expression, the efficiency can be written as v r into v square minus v 1 square into u divided by v q. This is another expression for the efficiency of the jet. Thus, to summarize our discussion, if a tangential jet is impinging on a curved vane and if the vane is moving with the velocity u, such that u and v are not in the same direction. The relative velocity with which the jet is striking the vane can be determined with the help of velocity triangles. And with the help of this relative velocity, we can uh, derive the expression for the impact of jet on the vane, the corresponding work done per unit time and the efficiency of the jet. We will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.